Uh, a few things we do have to be concerned about with wells is uh, we have to make sure we get the, enough depth so we don't run into this problem of pumping them dry. So ideally you want to get enough depth so that you create enough of a reservoir in your well as well as in the out around surrounding areas that you uh, hopefully can maintain flow. Another thing we talked about was casing. Oftentimes we need to case the well all the way down the length of it so you don't have material caving in. Or we don't have surface water from up here shallow filtering in and contaminating our clean water that we're drawing out of the water table down below. Because you got to realize all the water that's filtered down through the ground, the ground acts as a purifier. And by the time it gets down into this aquifer, it's relatively pure. The exception is where we've had contaminants in the soil and we've leached contaminants down into the groundwater. And right now the greatest fear is nitrates and we're finding wells in southeastern Washington that are getting some nitrate levels built up in them from too much fertilizer and excessive irrigation leaching water down into the water table and fouling the water effectively. <laughs> the problem you have around the surface is if you have water leaching in here and one or two feet down was coming in and coming in the side and dripping down the well, you know, gosh, the dog might have come over next to the hydrant, you know, and lifted his leg, and that's going to leach down into the well. So you want to seal it off at least down a ways so that you don't get any of that surface contaminant. It needs to filter through the ground a few feet before it's pure, purified. Let the bacteria work on it as it's going down. If you have things like animal waste, yes. Hey, is it true that it takes nature 17 feet to purify water? Well, is it true it takes nature 17 feet to purify water? Every soil is going to have a different ratio of what it takes. Okay, totally depends on how fast it's going to work through the soil and how long, how much bacteria is in the soil, and how fast, uh, how aerobic it is. If there's a lot of air or if it's more saturated. See, the more saturated, the harder it is to break it down. Got to have a lot of air to get the bacteria working. So all those things are all interrelated. See, it's a very dynamic process. All these things you've been learning all fit together. And it's not a simple solution. You just can't say, oh yeah, it's 17 feet. No, unfortunately you can't do that. Might be four feet in some places might be 30 feet in others. Alignment. These wells need to be perpendicular. <coughs> perpendicular. To the, gr to the world. Plumb up and down. So that when we drop this well, this pump down in this well, it hangs straight down and doesn't hit the sides of the well casing. So we want absolutely perfectly square to the earth and perpendicular, straight down. And it's very critical that it gets drilled that way. If it gets drilled at a slant, it's real hard to put a pump in it. If it gets drilled down and has a bend in it, you might start to drop the pump in and when you hit the bend, it gets wedged. And that happens way too often where you have a crooked hole that has been drilled and it goes down and as you drop the pump in it goes sideways and gets wedged in the hole. It won't go all the way, it won't get past the bend. And in the process it gets stuck and you try to pull it out and then it, you lose it in the hole. It becomes a worthless hole. You got to go next beside it and drill another one. At the bottom if you case it you need to put perforations in the casing so water can get in. So if we case this thing, if this red is the casing, down here at the bottom, where once we get into the water that we want, we're going to put holes in it. What they generally do is cut slits with a torch, something like that, and this will have slits. And water can 
work its way through the slits into the well casing, inside the well casing itself. So you just cut slits in them, the width of the torch cut. And then the, the gravel and rock and whatever that's around, that's in the drilling, won't come through the slits. If it does, you can pump that stuff out. That's part of the development of the well is you want to get all of the fine grindings out as, at the end of drilling and that's called developing the well. Once you've drilled it, you want to develop the well. Um,